We got one back here. Hi, uh, Steve, you talked a little bit about process of the film. If you uh, back up a little bit and talk about when you first come up with the idea and the development of it and the actual pitching process, how do you attack or how do you uh, address the story arc versus the characters so that people are able to really embrace the idea of the film and then how, and then how does that play out? You're talking about like when you're trying to raise money for it? Correct, or, or putting it together and, and pitching right. it. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, every film is different, but uh, most of the, most of my um, films that I, you know, think are the better films that I've done have been, you, we don't, you don't know where the story is going. Um, you know, on Hoop Dreams, we have no idea where they're going. We didn't, you know, uh, on um, on the Interrupters, we knew we we knew that there probably wouldn't be a sort of simple narrative arc uh, at all. Um, so in, in a lot of these films, like Barbara's film or some of the films I've done where you're following stories as they unfold, you can't possibly know where they're gonna go. So how do you, how do you pitch it to people to try to get support? Well, initially what you do is you try to, I think what you try to do is talk about what the film is going to address and use examples that may never come to pass. Um, to, 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 to help them see it in their minds. For example, on The New Americans, when we were trying to raise money for that, our proposal had a list with little blurbs of the kinds of people we might follow in that series that were drawn from true stories. You know, the Russian cab driver who was a doctor back in the Soviet Union. Um, you know, we had a, a whole list of those so, and then we talked about how, you know, what we were going to do was we were going to start with them before they became immigrants in their country of origin and to understand who they were there, why they were coming to America, and what did they expect to find when they came to America. And then we would follow them as they made their journey to America and into their first few years in America to see what becomes of them and how did what they expect measure up to what happened and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, you, that's a way you can talk about story and arc and sort of give people an idea, especially with your examples, of what they might see without even knowing who your main subjects were uh, at that point. Now, I was at a point in my career where, uh, you know, I could get money based on that. Um, I've been in places in my career where you can, and in those situations what you have to do often is, is that you have to go out and just start your film and start filming uh, with nothing, which I've done, and then, you, um, and then as you start to get something together, then you can write a proposal, cut together a demo that kind of gives people a sense of what you've got and, uh, and where do you expect it to go, and, and you know, that's kind of how it works a lot of times. On the Interrupters, for example, we pitched it at this thing called the IDFA, the International Documentary and, uh, Film Festival. Amsterdam has a forum. A number of festivals have these now. If you're aware of them, where you go, they select projects that are submitted, and you're allowed to pitch them to broadcasters, like a room full of broadcasters. It's sort of like the Christians and the Lions a little bit. But, but you, you, you go in there and you pitch it, and they expect you to bring a demo. So for the Interrupters, for example, we went out and in two days we shot uh, some stuff, and I came back and I cut together a three-minute demo. And it gave the people at the pitch forum enough of a sense of what we were going to try to do. There's only one shot from that entire three minutes that ever made it in the final film, and the, and the guy that we were focusing on in that three minutes is not a main character in the final film. But it at least, you know, in two days we were able to shoot and cut something together that could give people an idea in the room of what it was going to be, along with our proposal. And, and it, what's that? No, no, it doesn't at all. I think, you know, and there's a real, I think there's a real trick to cutting a good trailer. Um, it's, it's not a trailer like a movie trailer, because you haven't shot the film yet. It's, it's more of a, it's more of a tease of what, you know, what you're going to get. And, and a, good, a good demo for raising money always leaves the person watching it with lots of questions and a desire to see more. Not like, oh, that was great. You know, I feel like I understand that. You don't want that because then they don't have any motivation to give you money. It's like you want them to watch it and go, but wait, uh, 
that guy, what's, so what's going on with him? You know, if that's what you want people to come out of it. Do they want to hear about social implications at all? What's that? Do they want to hear about social implications as far as the film's effect on social change and things of that nature? Well, it depends on who you're trying to raise money from. If you're trying to raise money from a foundation that that's their particular issue that, they, that they're that they focused on, then you slant your proposal that way. If you, it, but you know, just every, every proposal to every, potential funders should be tailor-made to them, so. Uh, we have another question towards the back of the house here. Hi, um, first I just want to say I've watched Hoop Dreams more times than any other film. I just, I think it's great today. I just, I hope everybody's seen it. My question has to do with how you come to make your decisions on what topics or issues to tackle. Other than financing, what have been some barriers and the second thing, you might not want to answer both of them, but I'm interested if you've had some projects that you haven't been able to bring to completion, and if so, if you would maybe talk a little bit about that. I think the second question is more interesting to me. Okay. Well, uh, I've never started a project in earnest and not finished it, so I don't have a good... Um, dream, something that you oh. had an idea of. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Well, there was one I would, you know, I'll just quickly tell you, because it's, you know, you'll realize why it would have been really good to do. But a number of years ago, I heard about the situation in um, Louisiana, in, where, there, and it used to be in a number of the southern states, uh, post-Reconstruction, after the Civil War, during Reconstruction, that since you could no longer have slaves, um, the governor's mansion, it's still, it's still true in Louisiana, this is what's so remarkable about it, is that the governor's mansion has a staff that's made up entirely of uh, prisoners from Angola prison that serve the, in the governor's mansion. They serve the family and the governor and occupy all the various you know, roles in there. And they're all convicted murderers uh, because they determined that um, that, and they have to be murderers who committed crimes of passion. So it couldn't be like a drug deal that went bad, somebody off somebody, because that's not someone they want serving their kids in the mansion. Someone who killed a guy because he found him sleeping with his wife in an act of rage, that's okay. So, because generally speaking, that person is not considered a career criminal, it was just, uh, you know, uh, uh, their anger got the best of them. So they, they figured this out over the years. So I wanted to do a film that would be in the governor's mansion for like a year. Because the other thing is, is that there's a history of, um, there's a history of uh, the governor when he leaves office, he would pardon, at one time he pardoned the entire staff of prisoners. So this is a highly competitive position within the Angola prison. I mean, because they do the interviews there. So, um, and then that became controversial over the years, and so the governor would often pardon one or two people. That's it. So that means that the service is remarkable. Um, you you got to figure. And it's, and on the one hand, it's a, it's a much more humane way for men who are serving sentences to live their lives. They get to spend it in the governor's mansion. They live in these police barracks and not in Angola. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is, is, of course, it's modern day slavery. So I was just fascinated with that. And I got as far as a meeting with the governor, this is a number of years ago, and the DOC guys, um, where I made my pitch to the governor and um, the DOC guy shot it down. Uh, so I didn't get to do it. But I wanted to call it, guess who's serving dinner? I thought that'd be a good title. <laughs> but, um, yeah, can't you just go back for every new governor? <laughs> I should, yeah. I, mean, I don't think Jindal would, would go for it. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things where, like I was saying earlier, put people in positions of power are way more sad. I might have been able to pull that off 30 years ago. But, I, I, you know, I, I don't think it's hard now. But to your first question, I just want to answer real quickly. Most of the films I've done have the, the genesis of wanting to do them is because there's something about this particular topic that bothers me. 
Um, it may be that I don't feel like I understand it and it bothers me I don't understand it, or it may be that I have conflicting feelings about it and I want to try to understand it better. With the New Americans, it came at a, the, the genesis of that idea came at a time when we were seriously debating immigration, which we do about every five years, it feels like, in this country. But, um, and I remember thinking, um, you know, I don't know how I feel about people coming over the border and what does it mean as America becomes a much more diverse culture. Um, I just remember thinking, you know, I'm a liberal guy, but you know, I, there's things about that that I have questions about them that, that I wonder about. And that was, that was a bit of the genesis for that. With Hoop Dreams, it was, I had spent many years playing basketball, you know, through high school and one year in college and having African-American teammates, but never, they were never friends. They were just teammates. I was never in their home. They were never in my home. And uh, this game meant so much to them. I wanted to understand why. And so, you know, with each film, there, there are things, <clears throat> there's usually something that's, that, and, but I'm, I'm not interested in doing it as an issue-oriented film, but trying to find a story, or, or, I, or I latch onto a story and I realize the thing that the reason I want to make a film about it is because of that. It's not even, it's not even that calculated a lot. It's not like I think, well, I'd like to do a film about, and then go find a story. A lot of times it's like, this is a fascinating thing going on here, and then I kind of realize why it fascinates me. We have another question towards the